Bari. Muna in the layer, Ajay. It's good to be here today. And God has been good to us, right? And um, we're just going to study a little bit together. And hopefully God will bless us all in a special way. I'm happy to be here today. I thank Pastor Mueve for the title of Inviting the message me. is Divine Interruption. And uh, my desire is to show you how God works through our trials. Our crisis to accomplish his purpose. Uh, none of us really like tragedies or crisis to come into our lives. But I can I pray that if you know the will of God for your life, instead of being disappointed, you will be blessed by them. Uh, just as a way of introduction, I'd like to share a story from my life. Uh, I was a young boy, um, probably around 12 or 13. And on this particular day, our lights got cut off. Um, not a happy day. No TV. TV no radio. radio no lights. But on this day, the... Oh, yeah. So on this day, the um, Kirby uh, vacuum cleaner man was coming by the house. I said to get your mind all your CBA And let's go down here so we can. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I need to come a little closer. So I can see your eyes. So the vacuum cleaner man comes to our house on a day when we have no electricity. But we had the windows open because my family opened the windows and doors. So there's a, a lot of light in the house. And so he came in and he began to talk. Um, had a lot of passion about the vacuum cleaner. This vacuum cleaner can do this. And it can do that. And my mother was trying to say something, so, uh, 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 interrupt. No, no, no. And every time she tried to interrupt, he's talking faster. Because he thinks she's trying to stop him from selling the vacuum cleaner. And he's going on and on and on. And it can clean up anything. And then he takes a bag of trash and dumps it on the floor. He, he takes some more trash and dumps it on the floor. And he takes some more trash and dumps it on the floor. And my mom is steady trying to interrupt. And my dad says, just be quiet. The man says, if this vacuum cleaner cannot clean up this trash, I'll get it up with my mouth. And my dad said, you don't have to do that, but if the vacuum cleaner won't get up the trash, will you just give us the vacuum cleaner? And he said, if this vacuum cleaner don't clean up the trash, I'll give you the vacuum cleaner and I'll get it up with my mouth. And so my dad says, you may as well start getting it up with your mouth because there's no power. No electricity. Now, for us, not having power was not a good thing. It was a crisis. But that crisis turned out to be a blessing. 
Because we didn't have power, the vacuum cleaner couldn't get up the trash. And we got a thousand dollar vacuum cleaner for free. And we watched the Kirby vacuum cleaner man get up the trash, but not with his mouth. <laughs> And this is how God uses divine interruptions to change our lives. Because crisis helps you know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, you can't grow. So you have to be exposed. What's on the inside has to come out on the outside. And God has many ways to accomplish this. In the book of Acts, God is taking the Apostle Paul in the lesson that we'll be looking at today. And he's going to use the crisis in his life to be a blessing to many. Now the particular problem God, or the particular thing God has told Paul is he wants him to go to Rome. You know how much it costs for you to go to Kenya? A lot of money, right? For you to leave here today and go, you need a couple of thousand dollars, right? For Paul to go to Rome, it was going to take a lot of money. And he didn't have the money. But guess what God did? Not only did Paul not have the money, but there were some people who wanted to kill him. And they promised if they catch Paul on the street, they would kill him. So he had two problems. One is he didn't have the money to get to Rome. And two, if these guys see him, they were going to kill him. Now I'm going to let you open your Bible a little bit. I don't think you all need an interpreter. <laughs> but I have one anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because <laughs> one thing about the interpreter. <laughs> Boy, he slows my passion down. Because I got some fire on the inside of me. To release on the outside. Amen. But he does have a great smile. Amen. 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 So Amen. open your Bibles with me for a minute. To Acts chapter 23, I believe. Acts 23. I want you to see something here. Acts 23. Look in verse 12. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together, and they bound themselves under a curse. And they said they would not eat or drink until they kill Paul. Would y'all be happy if y'all knew some guys were out to kill y'all? And, and these guys said they're not going to eat nor drink till they kill Paul. And all they want to kill him for is preaching. Now they wouldn't, they wouldn't have to worry about some of you because y'all don't preach. <laughs> some of you don't have to fear because you don't witness some of you don't have to fear because you don't give any money some of you don't have to fear because you won't come back to church in the week, during the week and now let me deviate here or go a little bit get off this track for a minute. Now maybe um, you stay with us, stay with us. Yeah. Okay. Maybe now. Well, no. How long you been in church now? How long you been? Here? Five. Five years. Five years. 
Okay. Yeah. So in five years, when I go in the man's bathroom, it's still the same way that it was five years ago. This is not good, brothers. When I come to your house, I hope that your restroom don't smell like urine. <laughs> <laughs> PP. Yeah. PP. <laughs> you would not let your bathroom be like that at your house, right? Be before somebody comes, what you do? You clean the house, right? Come on, guys. <laughs> now, in the restroom, it's the ugliest restroom I ever seen. Amen. Amen. I, I, over my head in the restroom. It's a hole. A big hole. Like an animal can jump on my back. So <laughs> I'm, they, yeah. Imagine that I, I, if I sit on the toilet and, and I look up in this big hole. Come on, guys. Amen. Amen. Nobody should have to ask us to fix, fix that restroom. I'm a plumber and I almost took my coat off and, and went to work because I think the toilet stopped up. That's a crisis. And that reveals character. That tells me a lot about somebody. I won't point any finger. But I guarantee <laughs> well, I don't guarantee. But I hope. I hope I don't come over any of your houses. And your restroom, man, is like that restroom. Because I am going to tell people that you are nasty. Nasty. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> right. Now. That crisis is sitting there for God to work on somebody's heart to do something about it. In our story today, these men want to kill Paul for preaching. Trying to help save people's lives. And you know what God did? He let Paul get arrested. Taken to jail. Or on house arrest. For two years. You know why? Because he put 200 men to guard him. So the people can't kill him. And Paul said he wanted to go to school. To appeal to Caesar or go to court in Rome. And so the Romans are going to pay for him to get to Rome. Is God good? Not only did he protect him, but he gave him a place to live. Not only did he protect him, but he gave him a place to live. But he's also getting them to pay for the trip. And God will do the same in our crisis if we'll let him. Pastor thought I was going to say something about money. But I need not talk about money. Because all the guys I saw come in here had one hand in their pocket. And something else in the other one. So I figure they're not giving up much money today. I love you, brother. I'm not even messing with the women, brothers. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Because men. 
You all are the heart of this church. You guys can do better than that. Amen. You do not have to wait for women to clean up for us. Did they say amen? Amen. Do you say amen? Amen. Is that true or not? Can we do better, y'all? Yes. I will volunteer to help paint that bathroom, paint the women's bathroom, change the tile, paint the ceiling black. <laughs> we can see no spots if it's black, right? <laughs> Amen. Not this ceiling. The one in the bathroom. Amen. I will volunteer. That crisis has opened up an opportunity for us to band together and do something. Amen. Amen. Now, for the word of God. <laughs> Turn to Acts chapter 27. In this chapter, God has promised Paul he is going to Rome. Acts 27, I'll read something to you. Acts 27. Now I want to just talk because oh. I can see the Acts 27. Acts 27. Is it warm or is it just me? It's okay. Okay. Good, good. 27. Anyway, <laughs> God's going to use what I call a divine interruption <laughs> to carry out his purpose. <laughs> and also, <laughs> he uses them <laughs> to help us get things out of our lives <laughs> that we should have gotten out a long time ago. <laughs> he also uses them <laughs> to help us have friends in place <laughs> that can comfort us and help us in time of need. <laughs> Suffering in the will of God <laughs> is far better <laughs> than suffering outside the will of God. Chapter 27. And when it was determined that they should sail to Italy, that's Rome. Paul is getting ready to go where? To Rome. Rome is the capital of the world. It's the biggest city in the whole world, and Paul don't care if he's going in chains. He want to go to Rome. Do you know what the blessing is? Paul is God's king of preachers. He is a powerful preacher. Two years. He has had soldiers around him guarding him for two years. Do you know what he was doing for two years? He wasn't talking about the women. He wasn't talking about money. He wasn't talking about houses. He was talking about Jesus. And what God had done for him. What a blessing, brothers and sisters. I remember when you were renting a church. Now you are in your own church. Is this your church? Or somebody else? It's ours. Whose? Ours. Is it your church? Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. like How did you get it? How did you get it? Somebody tell me. Don't be afraid. God gave it to you. Amen. Amen. Ten men here can take care of this church. By money. Amen. 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 Who said amen? <laughs> Even the children know that's an amen. I thank God for you. Listen, so Paul is heading to Rome. Now let me. But he's not. 
alone. Look in, the, look in the passage, it says, and when it was determined that we, y'all see that word, we? You see we? Look in chapter 2, I mean, verse 2, the last few words. Me with us. Y'all see that word? And then third, verse 3, and the next day, we. You see the we? Into it. And verse 4. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, my page turned. In verse 4, and when we. And verse 5, and when we. And verse 7, and which we. Well, Who is we? Well, Luke is writing the book of Acts. And God has let Luke. Be with Paul to comfort him. And in verse 2, he has let Aristarchus be with him. What's my point? When you're going through your storm, when you go through your crisis, I pray y'all have some friends. And if you don't, I pray God bring you some friends. Somebody who'll be there to comfort you when you're going through. How many times I have went through and God has sent friends to comfort me. People call me on every day for encouragement and comfort. And counsel. And many times they don't know that they're encouraging me. They're blessing me. Of some Christmases ago, I was at the house alone, snow on the outside. I was unemployed at that time because I'm a contractor. And if I don't get any jobs, I don't make any money. It was almost Christmas time, and I was hungry. But none of my friends could make it to me because there was snow on the road. And it just so happened, coincidence, that my neighbor's waterline busted. And she called me to come down and fix her waterline. And when I went down to fix her waterline, she said she had cooked a bunch of food to give to some of her family members and friends. But she couldn't get away to give it to them, and they couldn't give it to her to get it. So guess what I got when I went to my neighbor? I got a Christmas feast. Amen. Her crisis, her trial became a blessing for me. I had, what is it? Sweet potato pie. I had dressing. I had collard green. I had pinto green. And I was happy. For free. For free, brothers and sisters. Amen. And so God will put friends and family and people in your life to encourage you when you're going through your storm. But not only that, God will use our trials. Our storms, our crisis, to try and teach us to stop trying to save ourselves. But we must learn to trust God. Look down in chapter 27. And look down at verse 20. And when they saw no sun, no stars, for many days and they were caught in a storm it says all hope that they should be saved was taken away did 
Do you know what that means? No matter what it means, they could do nothing to save themselves. And when we come to the end of our road, that's when God will step in and save us. Because we are trying to do it ourselves. Today, when they gave the offering played out. <laughs> How many of you? I'll just say men. Amen. <laughs> how many of you men gave the biggest bill and how many of you gave the smallest bill? How many of you don't raise your hand? How many of you men gave over ten dollars today? Let me give you an equation right quick. If 10 men give $200 every month, that's $100 every two weeks. How much is that in 10 months? How much? One thousand? Two thousand. Two thousand. Right? Mm -hmm. right yeah. If twenty men do that, how much is that? How much? One thousand. Two 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 thousand. Say amen. 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 Any more? On the night? I think God's going to have to bring us to the end of our rope so that we'll let him save us. You don't have to worry though, because listen to this. God has a purpose for your life. If, if you are a believer today, God has a purpose for your life. And God is going to fulfill his purpose because he is a sovereign God. In spite of a shipwreck, in spite of imprisonment, God is still going to get Paul to Rome. But he's going to give him credibility. He's going to give him opportunity to preach to 276 men who believe it or not are going to be able to take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. God's going to allow him to go to shipwreck to get to an island where the people don't even have the Bible and still be able to preach the gospel message to them. God is going to allow the message to be spread whether it's in good times or it's in bad times. Don't think your bad times are just bad times, they're opportunities. Interpret them in the light of the cross. If God could save us through Christ's suffering, then guess what He can do through your crisis and your suffering? He can save many people alive. This missionary named James Durland. James was witnessing to the Indians. And they decided they were going to kill him because they didn't like him. The night they came to his tent to kill him, it was a big snake outside of his tent at the door. And they concluded that they don't have to kill him because the snake going to kill him. And so they waited one hour, 
Two hours. And it turned into all night. And the snake never moved. And what they decided was, instead of the snake being there to kill him, the snake was there to kill them. It was there to protect him from them because God knew they were going to come to try to kill him that night. And when they saw that snake protecting him there, God opened the door of their hearts where he could witness to them. And so his crisis became an open door and an opportunity to tell the gospel message to those who previously their hearts were closed. And I say to you today, let's open our hearts to God. God has a work for Metro. Metro. I work at a job and one day the door broke. They sent all the veteran guys first, and it was 10 of them that they sent. And day after day, when those veteran, the guys that have been there a longer time, day after day when they went to that door, they said they fixed it. And then a few hours later or later that day, it broke again. It broke every day until they sent all the guys that they believe could fix the door. And when they didn't have any more veterans, they picked me to go. A rookie. <laughs> and another preacher but this preacher was not praising God on the way up he was murmuring and complaining all this all that why this why that and I was telling him brother it's an opportunity for God to work but he couldn't hear that he continued to complain so we got to the door and he grabbed the ladder and he said let me up there and I did and I stepped back and I let him work on it and for one hour he did nothing but complain and murmur not only and then work but it changed the code which means it got worse and so I walked away and went to the restroom for 20 minutes so that that door could beat him up real good and when I got back he had no more hope for that door he said it's useless. In fact, the reason they sent us up here is so we can fail. <laughs> and to that I said, Amen. And I said, Let me up there. Now, what he didn't know is I knew that before that door ever broke. God had already been there before already planned for that day to come and was just waiting on somebody to trust him and when he got off the ladder I got on the ladder and I opened the door and I prayed I said Lord I know nothing Lord I see nothing Lord this is a mess. But I know you can fix it. And all I did is start touching stuff. They already replaced all the parts. And it's still not working. So it was the devil in the door. 
So I just start touching parts and thanking God for the opportunity to be up there. Thanking God for an opportunity to give glory to his name. And I said, God, if you bless us with this devil door, it will give me an opportunity to tell everybody how this door got fixed and I'm going to tell them God did it. Amen. Amen. Do you know what God did? He fixed it. Amen. I mashed the reset button. And the door reset. The alarm cleared. And the preacher got excited. He said, Let me see. He pulled me off the ladder. He got up to see. He said, What you do? Let me tell you what I did. It's right here in this Bible, and this is where I'm going to close. In Acts 27, I, this is what I did in, in closing this story. Acts 27, when you get there, say amen. Look in verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God. I do what? Believe God. Amen? Amen. I didn't do anything to that door Think. but touch the parts. Do you all hear me? And you know what they did? I had my radio on and I called Central and I said, Central, cycle the door from down there. I want y'all to cycle. And they started doing the door, cycling. And I said, Central, do you have any alarm? I got on the radio so everybody could hear it. <laughs> do you all hear me? Amen. Amen. I said, Central, are you showing any alarms? They said, we see no alarms. And then they said, what did you do? Glory to God. <laughs> they said, what did you do? You know what I told them on the radio? I said, I prayed to God. I got and God fixed it. Amen. It got quiet. <laughs> it got real quiet. <laughs> and they said, okay. Okay. <laughs> so when I came down, the people started coming to me and they said, what did you do? What did you do? One after the other. Before that, they don't want to even talk to me. But after God healed that devil door, amen. amen. It gave me an opportunity. It opened the door. It did what? Open the door Amen. of opportunity for me to witness to those guys at the door. Hey. And one by one, they came and said, what did you do? I said, I believed God. God. What, did God. what did you do? I prayed. What did you do? I touched the part. Amen. And Paul is telling you all, what did he do? Nothing. You know what's happening? God is doing it, but he's not taking away our responsibility. Our responsibility is to believe God. Our responsibility is to give, brothers and sisters. Our responsibility is to support. Our responsibility is if you done lost your fire. Oh my God. You better get it back. Amen. Amen. You better get it back. Amen. Now I can tell y'all. I go to many churches. And we got a lot of polar bear preachers. Because they make the pews be full of icicles and icebergs. Coldness in our churches. We need some fire. Amen. Amen. Do we need some fire? We don't even say amen no more. We just sit and watch. Like it's a television show. Lord have mercy. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes we ought to say 
Thank you, God. Amen. Something ought to be said because God is working in all our lives. God is, he has a purpose, he has a plan, and he's working it out, brothers and you may not see it, but God is doing it. And it's not a coincidence that I'm here today. And I really wanted to give you a theological message. I wanted to give an expedi exposition on Acts chapter 27. Point by point. Verse by verse. But because 20% of the people were asleep, I decided I better not try that. I mean, So in closing, God puts the right people in the right place at the right time to bless us. And let me share this with you from that same passage as I close. Look in chapter 27 one more time with me. I know I said that, but look at this. And verse 3. And when they touched Sidon, <inaudible> Julius the centurion <inaudible> and treated Paul <inaudible> and gave him liberty <inaudible> to go to his friends <inaudible> to refresh himself. Do you know what he just it said? <inaudible> it says <inaudible> the centurion took Paul's chains off and let him go into town even though he's a prisoner. And it just happened to be some people there at that time that Paul knew. But well, you still don't grab it, right? Do you know twice in the book of Acts, in chapter 12 and in chapter 14, when prisoners escape, you get killed. But Julius let Paul go, and they've, been, they've had him chained up for two years. Why would he do that? Why would he risk Paul escaping and risk his life to save Paul or to let Paul refresh himself. Why, why would he do that, brothers and sisters? Because of what? Because of what? Because of what? Huh? Because of what? Because the glory of God. Do you see the glory of God? If Paul escapes, you know what happens? Julius dies. But he let him go. But guess what Paul did? Guess what he did? Paul. He came back. What would you have done if they locked you up for two years and you were innocent? And then they let you go. Let you go hang out in town for a day. What would you do? Would you come back? And you innocent? No! You <laughs> hit somebody over the head. That's right. <laughs> Take their wallet. Get you some money. And get out of town, right? Trying to get back overseas. So they can't find you no more, right? But now, Paul. Because Paul could see that God was working in his behalf. And if God could work on Julius. To let him do that. Paul knew that he was going to get to Rome. And even when the ship was torn apart, Paul said, Y'all don't worry. Because God has promised me I'm going to get to Rome. Brothers and sisters, God has promised you He's going to get you all to heaven. Do you all believe that?
Do you know he's going to do that? No, my, tengo chido, caray. You must trust him, though. Amen. Muy, como, muy, it may amigo. not look like you're growing. La vida, oh, caray, it tú, may tú, not tú. look like you're going. La vida, oh, caray, it caray, may no, not look like you're doing any better than you were last year. La vida, oh, caray, but caray, caray, caray. believe God knows what he's doing. Caray, 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 caray. And through divine interruptions in your life. La vida, oh, caray, caray, caray. He's going to work it out. My sister got a little parakeet for her birthday one year. And she had it in the cage. And this, what, whatever bird it was, it sung. It would sing. All the time singing. And she decided to clean its cage out because it was nasty. But she decided to use a vacuum cleaner. And so she opened that cage to clean it. And when she opened the cage to turn the vacuum on, the phone rang. While she answered the phone, she had stuck the vacuum, which she took the end off in the cage. And she heard the noise, which means she has sucked her bird into the vacuum cleaner. She put the phone down, turned off the vacuum cleaner. Opened it up, and the bird was still alive. But he was shaking. She took him because he was dirty and covered with soot. And took him to the bathroom and put him under the faucet. The tub faucet. Turned on the water. And now she was drenching him with water. The bird was shaking, and she noticed that she turned the water off because she was about to drown him. And then she went and got a hair dryer to dry it off. Sucked up, washed up, and burned up. When she put the bird back in the cage, all it do now is we swing on the thing and just stare. No more singing. Some of you been sucked up, washed up, heated up. And you done lost your fire. All you do is stare. <laughs> but no song. No joy. No happiness. No amen. Dried up. Wet up. But not fire up. Wake up. Put a song. Your heart is my prayer. Thank you, Edda. Um, church choir, please. Oh. Church choir, church choir.